Command Line Navigation. When you first log in, you're in your user environment and there are things you can do and things you might want to do, but you need to know how to do them. One of the things you want to do is probably bring up a terminal window. Many things, many different commands are written specifically to run well in the terminal. And if you don't have access to the terminal, it's hard to run them. Not everything is created to run in the GUI. So how do you bring up a terminal window? Well, let's look at this right here. You can see if I click on my application, then I can scroll down to favorites and off to the right side, there is terminal. You can also go down to utilities or system tools some tools and you can find your terminal down here either way you can launch the terminal and once you have the terminal up you can start typing in commands and that's pretty useful so what do we have where am i if i do a pwd command i can see my present working directory i am in the slash home slash joseph directory if i do an ls command i can see things that are in that directory I can do an ls minus l to list it in long format, which makes it easier to read for some people. Or I can do an ls minus al to show all files, including the ones that are hidden. Hidden files are basically just files that start with a dot. And I can see all these files in my directory. So let's go back to the slides. Pressure I'm in. Well, the pwd command what does my prompt tell me well the prompt tells you your username and it also tells you the directory you're in and that can be useful it also tells you the host name and we'll look at that again when we go back to the terminal when you're logged in you have an environment well what are environment variables environment variables are basically name value pairs that are stored that your programs can use. So if you look at your environment, you will see a bunch of name value pairs. One of those name value pairs would be something like username and it would actually list the user, for in my case, it'd be Joseph. So username equals Joseph. I might also have things like my path. A path is a list of directories that I look in whenever I type in a command to try to run that command. So it doesn't matter what my environment is? Well, it does. Because if you have a environment and your environment doesn't have certain things in it, then you will have to explicitly indicate where those things are. Programs rely on the path to be able to find things. You can look at your environment with the env command to show the environment you can also change them with the export command so let's go ahead and look at this again so if i type in env i can see all these different variable variable sets such as my home and my actual home directory which can be useful because then I can use a program and I can tell it instead of going to slash home slash Joseph, I could do something like use the home variable. So how to use the variables? Well, if I wanted to type in echo, I can type in echo and it will tell me things. It will repeat whatever I tell it to repeat, but I can use variables here. Echo home with a dollar sign and it will not echo the word home, but it'll echo the value of the home environment variable. Some of these variables are set in some of the files in my directory. So if I do ls minus l, I can see there is a dot bash underscore history, dot bash underscore logout, dot bash, dot bash underscore profile, and dot bash rc. So if I take a look at the, the dot bash rc file, you can see that it has information here. You can also see the keyword export is in the file, but there is a hash mark in front of it, meaning it is commented out. If I look at my 
dot bash profile dot bash underscore profile I can see another thing right here I can see path is being set to whatever the path was currently at but then it's adding stuff to the end of it and then it is exporting it into the environment so whenever I log into my system this file the dot bash underscore profile file will be executed and you can see the cat command can be used to display contents of files. All right. Terminal redirection. When using the terminal, what do the greater than, less than, and double greater than mean? Well, greater than is used when I'm running a program to direct the output into a file. So whatever comes after that gradient, whatever it's pointing to, is where it goes. The less than, I am directing a file's contents into the input of a program. And then the double greater than means that I'm taking the output and appending it to a file. I can also use variables in commands, and I can use backticks as well. So let's go back to this terminal and take a look at it. So if I type in something like time, it will display the time. If I type in date, it will display the date. What if I wanted to save the date? Well, I could type in date greater than saved date.txt and it will save the date. If I go cat saved date, I can see the date's been saved. If I run it again, the same command, it will overwrite it and replace it. If I use the cat command, I can see the new contents of that saved date text file. If I use the double greater than, now it will append it to the end of there. I can append it multiple times, and then I can go look at the contents of the file, and I can see now we have multiple entries that are in this file. That can be useful. So what's the back tick? Well, the date command also has options you can use. So if I do date plus percent D, it says 09. Well, that's because it is the ninth day of the month. I could also put in quotes right here, add some more things, like a percent capital Y. And now it adds the year. I do a percent M, and it adds a month. And if I want, I can even add dashes in here. So now it displays that. So how can that be useful? Well, what if I want to save the date and I want to save it into a file. So I can do date, redirect that into a file that has whatever this thing produces, .txt. That's a little complex. So basically what I am doing is taking the date command, running that, it will produce a date in the format we saw above, and then this format above will be sent to the output. The output will then take this command and run it and it will generate a date. It will then append a .txt to the end of that and it will create a file with the contents there. So now I can do a cat and 2019-4-9 and I can see the contents of that file. So that's what the backtick does. It takes whatever it runs, whatever the output is, and puts it right in there on the command line for you. Manual pages. How do I find information by commands? What command or what information is provided by manual pages? How do I find out or how do I get out of this man command? And what if there are C functions and programs with the same name? Well, what if I want to know how to use that date command? 
I just used it. It worked. I can type in man date. Man date. And then it lists information about that command. I can use the up and down arrows to scroll through it. I can see instead of using a percent capital Y, I could use something else. Like a percent lowercase y, which would only give me two digits instead of four digits. If I want to get out of this, all I have to do is press the Q button. That's kind of nice. It's very useful in giving me information about commands. Also, if the, you want to, sometimes the command also shows up in programming languages. So if I type in man2 date, it looks to see if there's a section 2. Man3 date, there's a section 3. If I look at man time, you can see that there up here is there is, there is a time 1, which means I'm looking at man page 1. Well, time happens to also be a C function. So you do man to time and see if it shows up there. And we can see, oh, this is a little bit different than the man one time. This is man two time. And now we're looking at the C code. It tells me how the C code use, is used and what it does. Now, file management. How do I create files? How do I edit files? What information does the file system keep on each file? How do I move a file? How do I rename a file? How do I copy a file? How do I delete files? All of these things are kind of important things to do. So let's jump right back in there and see how we do them. Okay, you can create files, obviously by redirecting output from something to another file. And you can see that I've created a few files. One of them is the, well, this date thing. If I do ls minus l, I can list a bunch of directories and files and maybe I want to get rid of that saved date so I can do rm saved date and that gets rid, of, gets rid of the file I can also rename files so mv is either move or rename so I can do mv 2019-04-09 and I can call it um, some file dot txt and that will either move it or rename it basically moving and renaming are the same thing the reason why we use the move command is because the way that we are moving something is by actually changing the entry in the file system that points to the data on the drive so we're just changing that entry and so that's the exact same process as moving something so it made a little bit less sense to have two different commands I can also create empty files. So look right here. There is, well, the sum file.txt. And if I want to create another file that's empty, I can do touch. What touch does is it, well, it touches the file. It changes the modify date times and things like that. So if I do touch new file.txt, it will change the date the modification date of that file. Well, the file doesn't exist, so it creates it and then changes it. So if I do ls minus l, you can see that a new file has been created, and there it is. You can also delete files. In addition to using the rm for remove, you can use the unlink command. So if I unlink new file, it takes away the symbolic link or not symbolic the, uh, the hard link to the file and then the file is gone on the directory entries right here you can see this number one number two number one right here and then the rest of them are twos that is the number of links pointing to that entry and when the number of links goes to zero the file is gone and the memory is released okay so that's how you do some modifications and, and things like that. If I wanted to move the sum file into my desktop, I can move sum file to my desktop. Now it is case sensitive, so lowercase desktop is not the same as uppercase desktop. So if I do it with a lowercase d, it says not a directory. If I do it with a capital D, 
it does say it's a directory and suddenly it shows up on my desktop right here. And if I want to remove it, I can either remove it. Well, by giving it the location of the file or I can go into the directory, take a look around, see it's there and remove it there. And then go back down to my directory I was just in. And that's how you can do some basic file manipulation. But what about editing files? Well, I can use nano. Nano new file.txt and then I can type in some file contents something and I can press control X to exit out. It asks me if I want to save it. I say yes and ask me if I want to use the same name that I typed it in and I just press enter and then it creates a new file. And I can see this new file.txt. And I can use the cat command to display the contents of the file. All right. Searching and editing files. How do I find files containing some string of characters? How do I display the contents of a file? How do I know what type of file a file is? And how do I edit a file? Well, we just edited one, so we can see that. We know how to do that. But what about finding files that have contents? We know how to display the contents because we've used the cat command. So now let's go ahead and find files. I have a file in my directory somewhere that has the word something in it. We know which one it is. I can do a grep command, grep something and star to search all the files in my directory. Well, all the ones that don't start with a, a dot. And then it shows me, okay, a bunch of these things are directories. We can't search those, but there is this thing, newfile.txt, that has the word something in it. And I can even use parts of that, smaller pieces. If I'm using the word some, I can see that something still has some in it and it still shows up. So that helps me find the file. If I wanted to search in other directories, let's say I move this new file up to my desktop, it's gone. If I do a search, nothing shows up. Now, if I want to search all of my directories for files inside of them, I can do a star slash star, and then it finds this something up there. Doesn't really tell me where it is though, which is kind of difficult, but it does give me an idea that it is existing somewhere. All right, so that's searching. How do I create directories? How do I move directories? How do I re rename them? And how do I delete them? Directories are kind of like files. They're files that contain contents, including well, files. If I do ls minus l, I can see that I have a bunch of directories here. I can create a new directory with mkdir for make directory. So my new directory is going to be called newder, neuter, new directory. And then I can use ls minus l, and I can see that this new directory is there. I can rename that new directory mv neuter as older and that changes it ls minus l now i have to be careful if i decided i wanted to rename this old directory as desktop what would happen well if i do move older desktop that director already exists so what it will actually do is it will move it onto the desktop so you have to be careful with these removing and removing of directories. I can also remove that directory, rmdir desktop older. So it'll go up into the desktop directory and remove the old dir directory, but only if that old dir directory is empty. So if I drag this new file into the old dir directory and then try running it, it will say directory not empty. 
So I can go into that directory, or I can remove the file first. Desktop, older, new file. I can remove the old file, or the new file. And then I can remove the directory. So you cannot remove directories using the rmdir command if they have contents in them. If I create a new directory, new or again, and I create a file inside of it, touch neuter, new file. I can't remove the directory with the rmdir command, neuter. However, I can remove it, neuter, with a recursive command minus capital R to recursively remove it. And that will remove the new directory and all the files inside of it. So it cleans it out and it's gone. So that is a little bit of directory management for you. Links. What are hard links? Well, hard links are entries in a file, usually a directory file, that tell you where the contents of a file are on the system. Symbolic links are like shortcuts. They tell you a location. And this is not a physical part of the drive where they're located. They tell you a directory and a path all the way to the file. So they are not quite the same thing as Windows shortcuts, but they're very similar. Windows shortcuts are files that contain all kinds of information, including the path. So how do I create links and small links? We know how to remove them because we can use the unlink command. And as you might guess, you can also use the delete command or the RM command. So I'm going to create some links. So if I look at my directory, I have no files. So I do touch new file dot txt. And now I see that there is a new file. It also has one hard link to that new file. So I can do ln new file and then new file 2.txt and this creates a symbolic link well not symbolic a hard link from new file to well the new file to new file 2 so if I do ls minus l I can see now there is the number 2 right here indicates there are two hard links to the new file and new file 2 I can do ln minus s for symbolic new file and I can create a new file 3.txt which is not the same thing as a hard link so the number 2 will still stay at number 2 but you will see a new entry and that is my symbolic link. The symbolic link has one link to it and it points to new file. And so if I were to look at the contents of new file, which is empty, then, well, they'd all have the same thing. So let's go ahead and put something in it. So I uh, echo, hello, and I'm going to append that to new file.txt. Now if I do ls minus l, I can see that the content size of new file 2 and new file has both changed to 6, but new file 3 still has the same 11. Any one of them will display the same content. So new file .txt, new file 2, and new file 3 all display the same contents. But if I want to remove things, if I do an rm new file, Well, what do I have here? Now we can see that new file 2 is still there. And new file 2, because it was pointed to the actual physical location on the hard drive, will still have contents. New file 3 was pointed to the name new file, so the contents will be gone. So if I cat new file 2, I can see the contents still. And new file 3, well, it says, well, there is no new file, so I can't do that. So I'm going to remove that, new file 3, and remove new file 2. And they're gone now. 
And then absolute path versus relative path. Absolute path starts with the very root of the system, so it's a slash directory all the way down to the location of the file. Relative is based on where you're at. So all the symbolic links I was doing were relative paths. All the directory entries I was doing were relative paths, all based on where I was currently at. So they can be used interchangeably in certain situations. So let's go ahead and look at this. If I wanted to look at my well, my current directory, I can do ls minus l space dot. Dot is my current directory, and I can see what's in my directory. Also, because I know which directory I'm in, I can use slash home slash joseph. So ls minus l slash home slash joseph will also display my current directory. But I could look at the slash home directory and see other users. Well, there's nobody else, just me. Or I can look at the slash directory and I can see all of the directories on the system and get an idea of where things are. This is useful because using these absolute paths, even if you are in a different location, the absolute path always works. If you are in a different location, if I do ls minus l dot dot, it'll show me the home directory. But if I go down into my home directory and use the same command, it will show me the slash directory. But no matter where I am, ls minus l slash home will still show, show me the home directory. Even if I move to the slash directory, it will still show me this directory. If I want to go back to, back to my home directory, I can type in cd slash home slash joseph, or I can type in cd, or I can do cd tilde to get back to my home directory. Anyway, these are some of the things you can use for going around looking at directories. And that is the end of our slides for this chapter.